Uh, hello, English Seminar 2 students. I uh, just wanted to make this video so we could discuss the uh, conditionals a little bit um, and hopefully help you understand them a bit more and get you ready for your credit test. Um, so uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to look at the Moodle and see the first few units there are focused on the conditionals. The lecture notes that I usually give are uploaded there along with some exercises. And of course, the great Michael Vence whether you have it in PDF form, some kind of pirate form, or the actual book is a self-study book, and his unit on the conditionals is fairly good and fairly useful. Um, I can say categorically, if you are, if you understand what Vince is doing in the conditionals unit, you'll be more than prepared. But I want to help you with that because even um, he can get a little confusing at times. So basically what I'm gonna do is I want to just kind of go through the uh, lecture notes that are up on unit one and kind of discuss those with you and show you uh, what to um, kind of focus on and what are the, are the things that I think are the most important to keep in mind with conditionals. And I want to start with the basics. A lot of you already know this, and this is going to be review for some of you. So I don't want to, what should be the easy spark part, spend too much time on it. But conditionals, basically, you guys have two clauses. <clears throat> and they're what we call an if clause and a main clause. And then we connect these two clauses together, and we have what's, you know, sort of we call a conditional. Uh, and the if clause and the main clause, this is the structure that um, there's different ways we use this, but the sort of basic standard way of creating a conditional or way of understanding it is we have these if clause and then a main clause. Now, either clause we can have, we can, the if clause can be first in our sentence or the main clause can be first. Now remember, a clause isn't really a sentence. It's kind of a fragment of the sentence, of a sentence like he eats pie. So uh, that's not really a sentence, that's a clause. That's a subject and a verb and an object, but it's not a complete sentence. And an if clause is a certain kind of clause. And then this main clause is a clause, but these two clauses coming together, we create a complete thought or in English, what we call a sentence, obviously. Now, um, so uh, here's an example uh, down here. I hope you can see my cursor. If Kevin sees Tom at the party, he's going to be really angry. So we have Kevin and Kevin in, Kevin sees Tom at the party. That's our if clause. And then our main clause would be, he's going to be really angry. So the main clause you can see here is separated by a comma. The if clause is separated by a comma. And to be honest, that's kind of what they teach you in the standard grammar. But uh, very often now as the grammar is changing, people don't use commas in the same way and, it's, and, and that they used to. And of course, commas are used a little differently in American English, which I speak, and then people in Britain, they, you know, and in Australia. So these kind of these kind of like commas and things, in my opinion, aren't, aren't something that you need. You, you want to be aware of them, but you don't want to get hooked up or are caught up in them too much. So what you want to remember with this, these conditionals, you have two clauses. You have an if clause, you have an if clause, you have a main clause, and either clause can be first. The main clause can be first or the if clause. So here we are, we started with Kevin, and now we have Kevin's going to be really angry if he sees Tom at the party. So uh, both of those are good. That you can inter you can interchange these two clauses. All right. That's kind of the stand, that's the basic way of forming, formatting it or how we create it. Now uh, so there's five kinds of conditionals. Uh, Vince sort of goes over this a little differently. Uh, his is his, 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 um, useful as well in his description in the unit, but I decided to just kind of break it down into the standard uh, way of understanding, because I think if you want to go out and use the internet and use YouTube and uh, it, it you know, if you if you kind of understand this concept that there's five types of conditionals, 
uh, you can really, really use all the resources at your fingertips to help you deal with that. And the five types are zero, which we forget about sometimes, one, two, three, and then of course the mixed conditionals. We're gonna look at all of them. Um, some of them are easier than others, but uh, we're just gonna start from the beginning with the zero conditional. And first thing is, is yes, how do we put it together? How do we make it? So um, with the zero conditional, that, that's how we wanna look at both, all of these different conditionals, these five. We wanna look at two things, how we create it, What's the grammar like in creating them? And how is like the grammar in the if clause, the verb tenses and the verb tenses in the main clause, like what, what, what is that grammar like in the second or the first or the third? And then of course, the most important thing is uh, what do they mean? And where do we use them in this context? Or like what kind of context can we use them in? And how, do, how are they different in this kind of thing? So zero conditional uh, is, first of all, how do we make it? And our if clause is present tense or past, okay? And our main clause is present tense or past. So if our if clause is present tense, our main clause is present tense. If our if clause is past tense, our main clause is past tense. This is zero conditional. And um, here's my example. If Brandon eats cabbage, he gets sick. Okay, this is present tense. If Brandon eats cabbage, there we go. That's our if clause, he gets sick. That is the main clause, all right? And we can do it in the past tense as well. You know, if Brandon ate cabbage, he got sick, all right? So it's the same thing. The, the, the structure is the same on how we do it. Now, when do we use it? And that's, that's, that's the key. That's the, kind of the question we want to ask for all of these conditionals. And zero conditional, to be honest, we don't use all that much. We do use it, but uh, in, not near as much as the first or second conditional. And the main idea with the zero conditional, it's like, it's something that is a fact. It's a fact and it's something that was true if we use it in the past or is true, okay? Uh, sometimes you'll see it used and you can see here as a superstition or a saying, you know, some kind of superstitious or saying thing. Uh, and for example, if you break a mirror, you have seven ears, bad luck. All right. Uh, that's kind of like, you know, you know what that is. I think you have the same thing in check that we have in the English language. You don't, you know, mirrors are not good to break. If Giselle doesn't sleep enough, she's grumpy. Now this is, here we go. This is just a zero conditional, doesn't sleep. All right, that's present tense. She's grumpy, she is grumpy, that's present tense. Now, this is just a fact. Everybody knows this about Giselle. If she doesn't sleep enough, she's grumpy, okay? Now, if here, here we use it in the past tense. If I made a mess, I cleaned it up. You know, that's like what old people tell their kids or their little kids or whatever. If I made a mess, I cleaned it up. So here we go, that's a zero conditional in the past. Then it's true, it's something that's true, it's factual, all right? And the grammar, the verb tenses are the same in the past, are, are the same in the if clause as they are in the main clause, or in the main clause. That's it, you know? So we don't always use it that much, but we do use it. There's times where it's really convenient to use. Now, and I have this here, we do often use the first conditional instead and let's look at that. Let's look at the first conditional. This is kind of like the foundational one. Uh, you might be able to say we use this more than the others. Probably first and second are the ones we really use the most. Um, and let's start with how we construct it or put it together. And the if clause is present tense, okay? So our verb in the if clause is gonna be present and our main clause is going to be future. And so pretty clear. Now, let's think about how we uh, create future tense. Uh, future tense in English, we know, as you should know by now, future tense basically is will or going to. Will or going to is future tense. We can also use present continuous. 
um, for future, we use this a lot in English. So like on Friday, I'm buying my new computer, right? That's future I'm talking about on Friday, I'm using present continuous. So, and remember going to functions as present continuous. So first conditional, really simple. If clause, present tense, main clause, future. Here's an example. If Blake moves to Germany, he's going to eat a lot of sausage, okay? So if Blake moves to Germany, it's a conditional, right? Our if clause here is present simple. It's usually the if clause is present simple. It's usually not present continuous, but very rarely, usually present simple. And then we have our future going to eat a lot of sausage. Now, when do we use it and what does it mean? This is the real question. When do we use it? What does it mean? Like, what does that mean? What do we know about it? Uh, so, uh, and the main, the main, the main um, difference, what we really want to learn, or I want you guys to figure out is the main difference between this first conditional and the second conditional and the nuance or difference in meaning. So the first conditional is something that's real. It has a real possibility. It, it's like, it's something that is actually going to be able or could be able to happen in the world. I'm not talking about a fantasy. I'm not talking about some, some kind of fiction. It's something real, okay? And that's, that's important. It's grounded in like something that's possible to happen, all right? And this is first conditional, keep that in mind. So uh, here's, uh, an ex here's an example. Uh, if Josh wins the lottery, he's going to buy a new car. If Josh wins the lottery, he's going to buy a new car. So there we go. What do we know about that? Okay, what's key here, if it's this is we know in this this example that Josh bought a ticket for the lottery. It's actually possible he could win. He bought a ticket, not just like oh, if he ever wins it. No, he has a ticket. He's playing. He's waiting for the numbers. This is first conditional. If Mary goes to the party, her mother will be angry. What do we know about this? There's really a party. There's really a party that's happening. And if Mary goes, her mom's gonna get just be really mad, okay? So there's a real party that's happening. Uh, Brad is going to the hospital if his leg doesn't get better. So here we have the if clause, the main clause is second, if his leg doesn't get better, it's clear. What do we know about Brad? Brad's leg is bad. It's not good. Brad's leg is not good. Okay, so, and if it doesn't get better, he's going to the hospital. This is a real, it's based in reality. It's a real situation. Okay, and we are moving out. If we find a bigger place, let's hope we do. Okay, so we're looking for a place. This is a real situation. This is, this is first conditional. Remember, a real and possible situations. That's key. It's really important. Now, second conditional. This is in contrast to what I'm saying with the second conditional. So the second conditional, again, let's start with how do we put it together? What are the verb tenses? That's important. And uh, our if clause is past tense and our main clause is would plus a verb, would plus a verb, okay? And, you know, this is our, every second conditional is kind of gonna be constructed this way. And here's our example. If he had a million dollars, he would buy a house on a visa, visa. If he had, so here's our if clause. We have the past tense, if he had, and he would buy, would buy. Our main clause is of would plus a verb. Now, you guys, on your credit test, a lot of you will be like, yo, 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 I know that's second conditional, but you leave out the would, or you put it like a, you know, a two in between or something and you lose the point on the credit test because actually the grammar matters, like how you construct it matters because, um, you know, it changes, it can change the meaning or, or how you understand it if you're not correct on the grammar, 
in this situation, okay? So remember, with all of these, learn first how we construct them, whether it's zero, first, or second, or third, and then what they mean, all right? But make sure you understand, and the, uh, learning how we construct them is just something that you can take the time to do. It won't take you very long. If you just sit down and write it out, first conditional, we make it zero conditional, third conditional, we make it like this, you know, and like, you know that, okay, you can tell anybody, this is how third conditional is made. This is how first conditional is made. And if you can do that, you're, that's the, you're starting in the right place. And then you can build on top of that about like, okay, well, what's the difference between this first and the second? So here, the second conditional is constructed totally different. All right, our if clause is passed, first condition is done that way. And our main clause is would, suddenly we have a modal verb plus a verb, okay? So whenever you see that, you're like, oh yeah, second condition. Now, there's another weird oddity with the second conditional and the verb be, this is very British English too. We don't do it as much, but we do do it. And I, I think it's better that you learn it because uh, some of you in the future may take some kind of Cambridge exam and uh, you, you know, you're going to be required to know the British grammar. Uh, I talked a little bit about this last semester, you know, know the present perfect and like where the Americans don't use it, but the British use it. If you know that British grammar, you're, you have a higher chance of success on those exams. So, uh, and the, so this verb be, if we use be uh, in our if clause, it's always going to be were. So, if he were smarter, he would quit that job immediately. Now, normally we would say if he was smarter, you know, that's like what my grandma would say or would have said, but if he was smarter, he would quit that job immediately. But, the, but this sort of grammar, this proper grammar is if he were smarter. If I were younger, I would travel the world. So in this if clause, in second conditional, anytime you want to use the verb like to be, it's always going to be there. If we were, if they were, if I were, if Joe were, doesn't matter. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So that's how we make it. Okay. Now, when do we use it? And this is the difference between the first conditional and the second conditional. We use it in these um, hypothetical situations, all right? They're not real. They're kind of imaginary or like maybe something that could happen possibly in the future, all right? But they're not, it's, it's, it's hypothetical. That's a key word. I believe you have a similar word check it's hypothetical it's not it's it, it, it you know the first conditional is like real we know it's based on rooted in something that's around us uh, real but this is more like now we're getting into sort of abstract ideas and communication it's kind of imaginary uh, you know fantasy in some exam situations not all but hypothetical okay keep that in mind but this is the main between first and second. You want to remember this is the biggest difference to really learn, this difference between the first and the second. So here's an example. If Boyd worked harder, he would have better grades. Okay, so now Boyd, here we have worked. This is our if clause, would have. Okay, so if Boyd worked harder, he would have better grades. Does, what do we know about this sentence? Does Boyd have good grades? Oh no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't have good grades. If he worked harder, he would have better grades. But it, do we know that Boyd is going to work harder? No, we don't. But it's kind of hypothetical. If he did, he doesn't work at all. He doesn't study at all. You know, if he did, he would have better grades. We don't know if he's going to study. You know, because we don't. We're not making that claim. All right. Now, if we had, here's our next example. If we had more money, we travel to Costa Rica and surf all winter. That'd be my dream, you know, to, yeah, go to Costa Rica and hang out in the sun and surf and, you know, eat different food other than Canedlo Zelo Pepsiove and Shkvarki. 
because I don't eat that down there. You know, I'm not really sure what they eat because I've never been to Costa Rica, but I'm sure it'd be cool. So, uh, and if I had more money or if we had more money, we travel to Costa Rica and surf all winter. Do we have money? No, we don't have it. It's imaginary. It's not real. We don't have money. I don't have that money. You know, we live in like Little Majitsa Okres. We're kind of like at the, we're not, we don't have money to do that. It's kind of like fantasy in a way. Second conditional, hypothetical, imaginary, not real. Okay, uh, if he, here's our last one. If he saved his grandma's money, he would be married by now. Now, again, this is like a predictive thing and we can't really say, so it's hypothetical. We don't really know. We know that he, if he saved, that's past tense. So I want you, when you see a sentence like this, in this unit, I hope you're able to like, oh yeah, that's second condition. That, that second conditional. What does it mean? Oh, I'm not sure, but I know it's second conditional. Like that, that, that's a good start. That's a really good start. So if he saved some of his grandma's money, we know that, what do we know there? He didn't save it. And we know that he's not married. He would be married, would be, there's our verb, would plus the verb, would be married by now, okay? He had some money from his grandma. He doesn't have it. And like, we're thinking like in our way, our hypothetical way that, uh, you know, that if he, it's predictive, he would be married. But we don't really know that. How do we, we can't say that a hundred percent, you know, we don't know. It's kind of, it, it, it's sort of, this is the one that, that has this kind of predictive future possibility to it in, in a hypothetical way. Can't say that for sure. All right. So um, now let's look at the differences. And again, these are just lecture notes that you can download to uh, unit one and look at them. And uh, I don't want to spend too much time on these, but I think these three are useful. Uh, and let's look at the different, like what, what there, we have a first conditional compared to a second conditional. So uh, if I win the lottery, I'm going to be a new Toyota. Well, that's a mistake. That shouldn't be B. Uh, if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy a new Toyota. So that's my, my mistake there. I apologize. And if I won the lottery, I would go on a long trip. Now, what's the difference here on these? You know, we have if I win the lottery or if I won the lottery, what's the difference? You know, a lot of times you're like, no, it's not a real big difference. Yeah, on some level, that's true. But if I win the lottery, I'm communicating that I'm actually playing the lottery. I've actually bought a ticket. I have a ticket in my pocket. And when I say, if I won the lottery, I, now I'm fantasizing. I'm thinking maybe I have a, I don't have a ticket. Most likely I don't have a ticket. I'm just sitting in the pub when you used to be able to do that and having some beers or coffee. And I'm, we're talking about, what would you do if you had a money, if you had his money? And it's like kind of a hypothetical fantasy, okay? So this is the difference. This is a difference. Now, and here we have, uh, if the boy, breaks our window, I'm calling the police. If the boys break our window, I'm calling the police. Now, what is that? Think about it. What is that first or second? Yes, first. Okay. If clause is present simple and I'm calling, here we go. That's future. So, and what do we know about that? That there's some boys, they're playing outside our house. They have a ball. They're being rowdy and they're throwing, kicking the ball and it's hitting our house. And if they break our window, I'm calling the police. Okay. It's real. That's happening. First conditional. Those boys are down there now. And I, this is also a good, this is also good grammar. If someone broke our window, I would call the police. Like, so what am I communicating there? What's the context or situation uh, I'm talking about. So if someone broke 
our window, maybe I'm watching someone across the Sidlishtje, you know, and they're playing and again uh, when, next to someone else's building and they're, they break the window, not my window. Or I'm watching something on TV and a couple wild boys throw rocks through an old lady's window and break it. And I say, in this context, it's not happening to me. If someone broke our window, Bozhenka, I would call the police, all right? So if someone broke our window, meaning this is hypothetical, it's not real. No one's gonna break our window right now, nothing's happening, but I'm watching it happen on TV or I'm watching it happen down the street or across the Sidlishche and you know, I would call the police. This is the difference between first and second that I kind of want you to start to understand or have a better idea of. OK, um, and then this is essentially uh, the difference between zero and uh, first. Uh, and if Gab Gabriella drinks that wine, she gets sick. If she drinks wine, she gets sick. That's just a fact. That's zero conditional. Gabriella cannot drink wine. If she drinks wine, she gets sick. That's a fact. We're talking about Gabriella. Maybe she's not here. But if Gabriella drinks that wine, she's going to get sick. Now, where are we? We're at some kind of party in Zabava out in the village. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, like, there she is. I see her at the bar. She's talking to somebody and she's got a glass of wine in her hand and she's about to drink it. I'm like, yo, 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 wait a moment, Coach K. And then, oh man, if Gabriella drinks that wine, she's going to get sick now because that's first conditional. And it's based on, I'm saying that in the context that there she is. This is a real situation. Remember, first conditional is kind of real. It has a real possibility to it, all right? It's actual, all right? Now, third conditional. And this one is the one that get people get like, oh man, or whatever you guys would say it. Uh, and like, th this is like, you know, oh yeah. Now I'm gonna try to simplify it and give you a few pointers or, or, or tips on how to deal with it. First thing is how do we make it? And this is one of the complicated things because it's like, all right, uh, we make it with the, um, if clause is past perfect. Now you should know what past perfect is, but past perfect is, you know, not present perfect, but past perfect. Past perfect is had plus the third form of the verb. Had eaten, had known, had believed, had bought, had fought, had seen. Okay, past perfect. And then the main clause is would have plus past participle. And past participle is again this third form of the verb from your charts. So would have known, would have seen, would have gone, would have bought, would have passed. Okay, so past perfect uses the past participle and the main clause. Some people understand it like this. The if clause is past perfect and then the main clause is would plus present perfect. All right, you can think of it that way if that, help, if that helps you to, to figure out how to construct it, all right? And uh, here's, our, here's an example. If Radek had gone to the cinema, he would have seen the fight. Had gone, here we go, would have seen, all right? That's how we do it. So anytime you see this, even if you don't understand the sentence, if you're like, whoa, 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 whoa I may, I think that's, I think that's it. I think that's third condition. And now we want to figure out kind of when we use it and what it means. Now, um, now we uh, again, this is something and we're going to talk about this when we deal with our modals in the past as well in upcoming weeks. But uh, we use the grammar and the negative a lot. All right. So, for example, if Philip hadn't invited me to the party, I wouldn't have met Boshenka and would be happy today. Okay, if Philip hadn't invited me. So we, a lot of times you're gonna find this in the third conditional where the grammar, like the, the verb tenses are gonna be in the negative, 
all right? And uh, either in the if clause or the main clause, it's just, it happens a lot. We'll have a lot of examples in your homework and in events where, you know, we'll help kind of, if you do those and take the time to do those, it'll hopefully help you kind of um, get accustomed to that. Now, when do we use it? And this is the main thing, all right? So first of all, now the zero conditional and first and second conditional, we've talked about those. Uh, and uh, none of those are in the past. When we're speaking about something that happened in the past, now, the only conditional we have that references or we can use in the past at all, when we're telling a story about something that happened last summer or yesterday or last week is third conditional. So third conditional is past, all right? So this is the only conditional that's past. Mixed conditionals are something else that they, they, they can deal, they can, they can go into that territory. But of our, of, our, of our first four conditionals, only third conditional is past and it's always past. It never has very, maybe, a very small, there's a place where you would be, oh, okay, maybe they're talking about like a result in the future, but no, think of it right now as past, okay? So when I'm talking, when your sentence is like yesterday, last week, last month, and when I was 10 and you're in the past and you, and you want to bring a conditional in, you're going to use third conditional. You're going to use third conditional. Um, you know, Sorry, we're just kind of getting interrupted here a little. And yeah, so now, um, so when do we use it? Now, um, hold on, yeah. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately you guys have to do this in the kitchen at the UEF department because my office, it's not possible. It's not possible to work in there today. Um, now, uh, sorry, now we're going so, so yeah, we use it in these hypothetical situations and it's something that also, it's hypothetical in the past, hypothetical in the past. And it's something that didn't happen. It's something that didn't happen, but we wish it had. And again, we're gonna talk about this again when we get to modals in the past in a couple of weeks. Um, and so here are some examples and we kind of want to pick these apart and see if we can understand what they mean. So if they had studied harder, they would have passed the test. So what does that mean? If they had studied, what do we know from that sentence? Okay, first the test is over. They didn't pass the test. And maybe they studied a little bit, but obviously not enough. So if they had studied, and here is our past perfect, then we would have done the would have passed. Okay, the, our main is would have passed. That's, that's how we're constructing it. So again, we're speaking about something that happened completely back here in the past. And if they had studied harder, they would have passed that test, but they didn't, okay? And uh, let's look at the next example. Harry wouldn't be in jail today if he hadn't answered that phone call. Okay, so, and here we have our grammar in the negative. Harry wouldn't be in jail today. That's our main clause, it's first. And uh, actually this is a mixed conditional. So, um, it's a mixed conditional. All right, so, and this is a, a fairly good example. So where we were starting a mixed conditional, I'm gonna actually come back to that. Uh, and I want to stay focused on this third conditional. Uh, Lucy would have won first prize if the judges hadn't been biased against redheads. So we have, if the judges hadn't been, there is our past perfect, would have won. All right, now what do we know about this? Uh, this is the fact that she, uh, did she win first prize? No, she didn't, she didn't. But this is again, something that didn't happen, but we wished it would have in the past. We're speaking about something in the past. What do we know? The judges, we believe were biased against redheads. 
and that Lucy didn't win first prize, but she would have. Okay, and again, third conditionals in the past. Uh, if I had found the money, I would have called the police too. So what do we know? Had found, past perfect in our if clause, and our main clause would have called. That is, uh, you know, would plus the present perfect or have plus participle. If I found the money he had, I would have called too. So what do we know about that? Someone found money. And he called the police. And now we're thinking about if that happened to us. If I had found the money, I would have called the police too now. Okay, so you guys, this gets um, difficult. And it's not like you can understand the nuance immediately. Like when this happened, like, you, you know, you, the only way to really start to understand these is actually to go through the exercises that are in the unit and deal with them. Uh, now, and mixed conditionals kind of like to talk with them a little bit. And hold on, you guys, let me shut that door. So, um, all right, mixed conditionals. And we looked at one before, and this is um, when we have two different kinds of conditionals in the same sentence. We do this all the time. It'll start with a second and it'll end with a third. It'll be a first and a second together. And um, I'm really, you know, we use these. Here's an example of uh, up here where we had one. Harry wouldn't, if he hadn't answered that phone call, this is a mixed conditional. So our if clause is in the third conditional. He hadn't answered, and we're speaking about something in the past. He answered that in the past. He wouldn't be in jail today. That is the grammar of second conditional. But what do we know? Harry's in jail today. So third conditional, when it's by itself, is only speaking about the past. It's something that's over and finished in the past. But mixed conditionals have an ability to start in the past and have a result that's true now. And we're, so we're mixing up the times, maybe even like a future, like starting now with the future. So sometimes we mix first and second and second and third. Okay, and Vince has some decent exercises there that will help you with that. Um, and uh, go ahead and look at these if you can. Uh, uh, they'll help you a little bit. I kind of want to explain. These are variations, and Vince talks about them and in the book. And instead of boring you with that now, I would like, you know, go ahead and I really recommend to spend time with uh, reading over the unit and doing the exercises I recommended uh, in the Moodle. And uh, one thing that's important to realize too, because modals actually obviously play a role uh, in conditionals. So, and the wood, we always use wood in our basic examples, but they can be switched out for, for different modals in different situations. We could use might or could or should or ought to. So uh, if Radek had gone to the cinema, he might have seen the fight. Instead of he would have seen the fight, what's the difference in meaning? It means something different. He would have seen the fight, we're saying like, yes, 100%. And again, this is third conditional. If Radek had gone to the cinema, and so instead of saying he would have seen the fight, we could say he could have seen this fight. He might have seen the fight, all right? If Petra ate that goulash, she would get, you know, she could get sick. Instead of she would get sick, she could get sick. So I'm taking the would out, which is like certain, and I'm putting could, which means it's possible, all right? So the idea here is I just want you to know that the wood you can remove and use a different modal if it fits in there to help you explain or maybe bring a greater idea or nuance into your sentence. Um, here, if we find the tickets for a good price, that's obviously a typo, we should buy them. Okay, so instead of we would buy them, we should. And there we're using should as advice, okay? 
I think a lot of you know that already now. And this is kind of the last thing I want to sort of talk about, because uh, most of you have probably already turned this off and said, what the heck, this is boring. So, um, but this is in, in the fence too. And this is kind of important. So uh, when we're making our conditionals, the if, the structure of the conditional, whether it's first or second or third or, or zero or mixed even, a lot of times we can take the if out and exchange it for some of these words like when or unless. The grammar functions the same, but it's gonna often change the meaning of the sentence, all right? And because this is an advanced grammar book, Vince wants to kind of expose you to that. So, uh, which is like, great. You know, I think that's really, th these are all really useful. And he has examples in the book of here of these. So instead of like, you know, if I ate that, I would be real. I, if I ate, uh, if I ate Bojanka's uh, daughter, I would get sick instead of like, when I ate, when I ate Bozenka's door, I always got sick, okay? Um, so, and these all have slightly different meanings. I, I wanna kind of go over this last little bit with you here. And so here we have uh, the differences in these sentences and uh, may, ho hopefully you can maybe try to figure these out on your own. When Kevin sees Tom at the party, he's going to be really angry. So what, what does that mean, you know? Uh, and it means that Tom goes to that party. When Tom goes to that party and Kevin sees him, what are you doing here? Okay. Now, unless Kevin sees Tom at the party, he's going to be really angry. So these are all conditionals. It's a first conditional. And we've taken out the if, and now we've used unless. Unless Kevin sees Tom. Now we know Kevin wants Tom at the party. And Tom is like, oh, I'm not going, I don't wanna go. But Kevin's like, this is my birthday party, you better be there. And unless Kevin sees them. Now, or we can have, even if Kevin sees Tom at the party, he's going to be really angry. All right, so, and what do we have with that? Uh, even if, so that means that Kevin's angry with Tom no matter what. If he's there or if he's not there, he's just mad, right, at Tom. Okay, so these, what, what, how we decide to start our conditional, whether it's with if, which is the traditional one, or these other words, they can change the meaning. Again, you guys, um, look at vents, look at the unit, the exercises that are there, go through the exercises in that unit in the book. Uh, feel free to contact me uh, if you guys have any questions at all, something's not working. Uh, again, my goal is that you guys understand these and that you are prepared for your credit test because certainly these conditionals will be on your credit test. And uh, I should probably stop this now before it gets any longer. And um, yeah, I will we'll put, yeah, so that's it. Sorry for the interruptions, but just couldn't be helped today. And uh, have a good one. That's it. Bye-bye.